Hi, I'm going to give you a brief overview of a novel open source project that Acunox has just released. Our project, called Kubarmer, provides the DevOps community with the first inline security policy enforcement engine for native Kubernetes environments. Now, the notion of container runtime security policy monitoring is not new. Existing toolsets, such as Falco and Tracy, are in fairly wide use today. Both have integrated eBPF backends, and they couple with Kubernetes metadata very nicely in the sense that they produce useful policies and they integrate the container and pod context necessary to identify and diagnose security issues. EPPF role engines are in general highly flexible, allowing you to express a wide range of conditions for which the policies can be triggered. Using the EPPF framework, both Falco and Tracy implement a form of asynchronous security policy control as illustrated to the right. I'll talk more about this in a bit. System-level policy monitoring frameworks can offer an important dimension to strengthening your security posture, facilitating runtime monitoring, and they offer the basis for security alert services. For example, let's take a look at the MITRE ATT&CK framework, which has been gaining momentum as a guide to help IT security teams implement the notion of threat-informed security architectures. While the MITRE ATT&CK framework spans tactics that include networking threats and data flow concerns, the majority of the tactics that are enumerated by the framework actually require the use of system-level defenses. For example, here is a Kubernetes-specific interpretation of the MITRE ATT&CK framework developed by Microsoft. I've provided the link below. Among its uses, Microsoft's Kubernetes interpretation of the MITRE ATT&CK framework really highlight the need for extending our notion of container security to include system-level policy control. And in fact, as DevOps teams begin to architect in-depth threat-informed cloud defenses, a system-level security enforcement engine will need to be involved, if not significantly relied upon. And this is where Kubarmer comes into play. To explain how Kubarmer differs from existing eBPF-enabled policy engines, such as Falco and Tracy, let's revisit the notion of asynchronous policy control and compare it to Kubarmer, which in contrast implements inline policy control. For Falco and Tracy, an eBPF service operating in kernel space can report an alert to a user space service, which can then take action. In this example, Falco and Tracy can detect an access or perhaps a deletion of a sensitive file. This alert can then be immediately processed by a user space policy engine, which could then terminate the offending process. In contrast, an inline policy control engine, such as Kubarmer, is able to integrate its policy controls directly into the kernel's processing pipeline thereby preventing the access or destruction of sensitive files. To do this, Kubarmer is not an eBPF-based solution, but rather is based on Linux Notable Security Modules, or LSMs. LSMs are the primary Linux technology in use today that are designed to implement inline process-level controls. In fact, there are a number of well-established LSM packages in wide use, including AppArmor, SE Linux, Smack, Tomoyo, and so on. There is also a technology called Kernel Runtime Security Instrumentation, which is a work in progress within the KRSI project, available since kernel version 5.8, which I'll talk about a bit more later. But the primary advantage with LSMs is that they don't suffer from the time of check versus the time of use problem. In other words, policies can be enforced directly in line with the execution of the application. But having said that, there are also some challenges in using LSMs. One primary challenge in the container ecosystem is that these are native Linux primitives and are not integrated with Kubernetes or with Docker. There is also a steep learning curve for DevOps teams to make effective use of LSMs as security defenses. Anyone who has worked with SE Linux knows how difficult the policy language is, and in fact, these SE Linux services are often simply disabled. And finally, there is also the complexity that different LSMs can behave differently. Kubarmer lets us overcome all of these challenges and adds the benefit of fully integrating its policies into the native Kubernetes YAML spec, further enabling these policies to be deployed as part of the native dynamic container orchestration. With Kubarmer, our Acunox team is introducing the first container-aware security enforcement engine for Kubernetes to let us enforce system-level security policies on containerized applications. With Kubarmer, we can now prevent policies from being violated rather than simply reacting to violations. Kubarmer is a Kubernetes native solution. You can think of it as a Kubernetes operator for LSMs. Let me break that down into two facets. First, you specify your Kubarmer policies in regular YAML format, and it orchestrates those policies through Kubernetes, making sure that all of the containers for which the selected labels, 
and the namespaces that have been specified get applied with those controls. Those controls are internally applied using AppArmor and SE Linux, but before applying the controls, KubeArmor takes into account which AppArmor version, what is the available Linux kernel, and ensures that the appropriate policies are instantiated in the appropriate context. Second, there is also an important eBPF part to KubeArmor to address the issue that I mentioned earlier, that LSM technologies are not Kubernetes aware. Whenever there is an audit or alert event, KubeArmor's eBPF monitor intercepts the event and can then add metadata about the container and namespace in the context, and then publishes the event to the appropriate logging stream or storage structure. This gives us a rich reporting engine that integrates the appropriate container's context and Kubernetes metadata while driving the policies using all the inline controls that LSMs provide. By the way, in the future, we see KRSI emerging as a wider element to the overall KubeArmor strategy. Essentially, what KRSI will allow us to do is specify the LSM security policy details using eBPF bytecode. Think of eBPF as a lightweight virtual machine sitting right inside the kernel, which allows the user space to specify bytecode logic and the hook points to the Linux kernel. KRSI will allow us to integrate eBPF bytecode with our LSM policy hooks, which will remove some limitations imposed by the language constructs provided by AppArmor and SE Linux. This is going to add tremendous flexibility. Okay, just to briefly touch on design elements. KubeArmor is a cage native engine for deploying system level security policies for containers. And you express the policies using a YAML policy specification, which in turn gets translated into the corresponding AppArmor or SE Linux specification automatically by KubeArmor, depending on the deployment structure of the container. Now, in the context of multi-cloud planning, you have the Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, which has a container-optimized OS, and it ships by default with AppArmor. On the other hand, you have EKS, or Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes Service, which uses Linux too, and it ships by default with SE Linux. So now with KubeArmor, the administrator doesn't have to understand the particulars of AppArmor and SE Linux, but can use KubeArmor to express the system level controls using the KS native YAML spec, and just let KubeArmor integrate the appropriate controls into the deployment and its GKE and EKS ready. In short, you get the full power that LSMs provide, while the LSM deployment complexities are essentially handled automatically. I'm going to pivot here and start to talk a bit more about KubeArmor policies both the general structure and some examples of how these policies might be used to protect containerized applications. Let's motivate the explanation by considering a service composed of two containerized applications, WordPress and MySQL. To the right, I'm showing a high-level outline of the major elements that compose a KubeArmor policy spec. The selector element basically lets us identify the pod or the group of pods associated with the policy based on the label. The match criteria allows us to define the target elements that will be matched to the policy, such as criteria related to files, processes, network services, or a selected app capability. The action specifies what will happen when the policy is triggered, and the severity label allows us to associate a metric that will be recorded when the policy triggers for purposes of alert management. To start, let's consider the point that MySQL essentially keeps its sensitive data files in a specific directory and we'd like to maintain an audit trail of the accesses that take place within this directory. Here is a simple KubeArmor policy that we can deploy with the MySQL container to implement this audit function. I'm specifying the selector to match the MySQL label and the match criteria to trigger on accesses to MySQL's DB directory. I'm setting the action to audit, which will produce a record for each access, and I'll set the severity to one, which I'll use to indicate that this is a log-only policy. Now, let's take a quick look at WordPress. In the WordPress container, there is a very sensitive file that contains WordPress credentials, such as the database ID and password, which WordPress will use to access MySQL. So I'd like to define a runtime policy that only WordPress, which runs as an Apache service, may access that file. All other accesses should be blocked. Let's break this policy into two parts. We're going to allow our WordPress process to access the credential file in the rule on the left and we'll deny access to this file to all other processes using the rule on the right. In the left rule, we're giving explicit access to an application in the Apache 2 directory, while in the rule to the right, we block all other processes. I have to give a little background to explain this next rule. In general, all containers in Kubernetes have service accounts that are used to access Kubernetes resources, 
such as the Kubernetes API servers. But in most cases, the applications inside the container do not need to access Kubernetes resources. So let's take a quick look at how we could block or restrict access to the Kubernetes resources, as it could pose an unnecessary attack surface within our container. All we have to do is create a policy to install a block action against all accesses to the service account directory, which holds the credentials that are required by the Kubernetes API to access resources. As a last example, let's write a really useful policy to prevent unexpected executions of processes that I explicitly do not want to run in my container when it's deployed. For this example, I'm going to define a policy that targets the WordPress selector label. Then I'll demonstrate a process execution block of two binaries that I don't want to run in my container, apt and apt-get. And this is all you have to do to set that policy. Hopefully, with these quick examples, you can see how easy it is to set and enforce policies in your containers. Just for completeness, let's quickly map those sample rules I just showed you into the matrix of attack tactics that Microsoft defined for Kubernetes environments based on the MITRE attack framework. One thing I didn't mention is that with KubeArmor, we are also bundling a wide range of MITRE and STIG-based policy templates that can be adjusted with minimal effort to help increase your container's runtime security. We are also working hard on some advanced concepts, like automated policy generation tools that can bootstrap new KubeArmor rules to enhance your security with minimum effort on your part. KubeArmor is available with Apache Open Source License 2 at kubearmor.com. Thanks so much to those who are helping us with design feedback and to those who are looking to contribute to the KubeArmor project. Akinox has a lot more planned for KubeArmor and a lot more interesting container security technologies coming soon. Thanks.